Welcome back to Machine Learning Foundations for Google Developers. I'm Lawrence Moroni from the TensorFlow team, and I'm here to be your guide. In the last video, you learned all about convolutions and how they can use filters to extract information from images. You also saw how to create pools that can reduce and compress your images without losing the vital information that was extracted by the filters. In this video, you're going to get hands-on and create your own convolutional neural networks. So let's get started. In earlier videos for the simple neural network for spotting fashion or handwriting digits, you defined a model architecture like this. You use layers, and primarily dense layers, for densely connected neurons. To use convolutions and pooling, you have the Conv2D and Max pooling layers like this. Now they can be stacked on top of your dense network. You define a convolution layer with a number of parameters. In this case, the 64 is the number of filters for this layer. Remember that the filters will be randomly initialized, and then the best filters to match the pictures to their labels will be learned over time. The 3x3 is the size of the filter. Earlier, we saw filters for the current pixel and its immediate neighbors that were 3x3, and that's what we're defining here. As before, we have an input shape, which is the shape of the images being fed in, and that's 28 by 28 with one byte color depth. Similarly, the pooling is done like this, with a layer, and the 2x2 two two defines the size of the chunks to pool. So in this case, 4 pixels will become 1. There's also min pooling, average pooling, and stuff like that, but we'll focus on max pooling here. These layers can then be stacked on top of each other, so the results of the 64 filters from the top layer will each be pooled, and then their results will each be filtered 64 times, and they, of course, will get pooled again. So let's take a look at the model summary so we can see how the data is changing as it goes through the network. You'll see something like this. There's a lot going on here, so let's unpack it. First of all, the initial output probably looks weird. Our images are 28 by 28, and we get 64 filters. So we'd expect our output to be 28 by 28, but it's 26 by 26. Now this looks like a bug, but it isn't. So let me explain why. Consider a picture like this one of a very sleepy doggy. On the left, I've zoomed into the top left of the picture so you can see the pixels. Now, when doing a filter, you scan every pixel and take its neighbors. But what happens if we pick the top pixel like this? It doesn't have any neighbors above it, and it doesn't have any to the left. Similarly, the next pixel doesn't have any neighbors on top, but it does have some on the left. It's not until you get to this pixel that you'll have one that has neighbors on all sides, which you can see here. So a 3 by 3 filter requiring a neighbor on all sides can't work on the pixels around the edges of the picture. You effectively have to remove one pixel from the top, bottom, left, and right, and this reduces your dimensions by two on each axis. So a 28 by 28 becomes a 26 by 26, which you can see here. Each filter will learn nine values for the filter coefficients, plus a bias for a total of 10 parameters, so the 64 filters have 640 learnable parameters. Our pooling reduces the dimensionality by half on each axis, so 26 by 26 will become 13 by 13, but no parameters are learned on this layer. The 3 by 3 filter then reduces 13 by 13 to 11 by 11, by removing a pixel border like before. The max pool halves that, rounding down, so we end up with 5 by 5 images. At this point, we have 64 filters, and the images are 5 by 5 for 25 pixels. Multiply all that out, and you get 1600, which then gets fed into the flatten. This set of 1600 values can then be classified with a dense network as before. So now that you've seen how the code works, Let's take a look at a lab that updates your fashion classifier from last time to use convolutions as well as dense layer types. So let's take a look at improving computer vision accuracy using convolutions. Here's the deep neural network that you've created already for the Fashion MNIST dataset. And we can see that we have flatten, followed by a dense with 128 neurons, followed by another dense with 10 neurons because we've 10 classes. When I run this, and I'm just going to train for five epochs. Let's see how quick it is. And let's see how accurate it is. First, it needs to download the data. And we can see after five epochs, it's up to about 89% accuracy on the test set and a little over 87, almost 88% accuracy on the validation set, which is really, really strong performance considering it's only been five epochs. 
So now let's take a look at what will happen with a convolutional neural network. So here you can see the model architecture. We have our same flat and dense dense that we had earlier. But in this case, on top of that, we have a couple of convolutional layers. And these convolutional layers have their associated max pooling layers. Note that the input shape is 28 by 28 by 1, because the convolutional layer expects it to be in three dimensions, with one dimension for the color depth. And that means we have to reshape our training images and our test images arrays. They were 68,000 by 28 by 28. We have to add another dimension onto it, 10,000 by 28 by 28 uh, by 1 for the test images, with that extra dimension added onto it. So now when I run it, it's going to compile, it's going to show me the model architecture, and it's going to start training. Now, this is going to be a little bit slower uh, because it's doing a convolutional neural network. But if you're running using the GPU runtime, change runtime type and make sure you have GPU. Do that even before you begin. And you'll see it's not too bad. It's five, six seconds per epoch. And in this case, with only five epochs training, it's gone up to about 93% on the test data and 91 and change on the validation data. So we can see it's actually improved. It's a significant step in the right direction. So have a play with it yourself. And as you're working through the code lab, take a look towards the bottom of the code lab where you can visualize the convolutions and pooling to see what they look like. And there's also some exercises at the bottom where you can try different things for yourself. Once you've done with that, you'll be ready to take this week's exercise. So now you're ready to experiment. Pause the video and give this lab a try. See how far you can get and have fun experimenting with the visualization of the convolutions. Welcome back. Now that you've had a chance to play with convolutions, it's time to do the exercise. Give the one at this URL a try. I'll share the code for the answer next time, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more great videos and the rest of this series.